Absolute value. Absolute value. So, what is the absolute value? It's the magnitude, right? It's the size of something without regard to its sign. So we don't care if it's positive or negative. We simply care about how big it is. So, you know, like we would say that if I went from here to Edmonton, I would go 300 kilometers north, right? There's a direction associated with that. From Edmonton to here is 300 kilometers south. If I'm only interested in the magnitude, how far apart, then I would take the absolute value. That removes direction from it. It simply becomes 300 kilometers in magnitude. So instead of a displacement, that would be a distance. Distance being a scalar quantity, not having direction associated with it. Yes, you should be a physics teacher. Yeah, well, I'm sure you got that all figured out, right? So absolute value is the magnitude Or size. It's denoted by these bars, right? Absolute value bars, let's call them. So what's the absolute value of three? Three. What's the absolute value of negative three? Three. Three, right? Because we don't care about whether it's positive or negative. We care about how big it is, right? You treat absolute value bars like you would treat a set of brackets. So if you were doing this calculation, Then what does that work out to? Well, so you can do this as. You may want to work this out. So we'd say it's equal to negative 6 plus 7 minus 15, which is equal to what? Negative 14, which is 14. Okay. So you, you work out what's in between the absolute value bars, just as you would a set of brackets. And at the end, you then ask yourself, is this positive or negative? I'm going to make, either way, you just make it positive, right? So the absolute value function actually has to do a little bit of thinking. Most functions are pretty mechanical, right? Like x squared plus 7x plus 12. Well, I give you an input. Okay, I'm going to square that. I'm going to take it, multiply it by 7, and add that on. And then I'm going to add 12, and I'm done. The absolute value function has to say, well, what is this thing, right? So if you were writing one for a computer, you have to look at it and say, if it's positive, then I'm just going to return what it is. If it's negative, then I'm going to make it positive and then return that value, okay? So, you know, if you were programming this in a computer, you would actually need an if statement, right? You'd have to look and say, hey, what is it about this thing, okay? What characteristic does it have? And then that determines what I have to do. Okay, so you should be able to evaluate absolute values. Just <coughs> 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 make sure you can get through the questions we expect you to do, which I'm sure you can. 6, 8 to 14. Yeah, I'm sure you can fake your way through those pretty good. And some stuff in, uh, okay, so let's take a look at absolute value functions. So you have a worksheet, and I have something that almost resembles it. Mine looks a little bit different, yeah. So, but I believe substantially the, uh, you know, the, the, some things are more different. This is the same, though, so. Complete the table of values shown for the function y equals 2x minus 6, so that's done, and the absolute value of 2x minus 6. So what goes here? 6. And, 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 okay. Use the table of values to sketch the graph of y equals 2x minus 6, okay, so 0 minus 6, 1 minus 4, 2 minus 2, 3, 0, 4, 2, 5, 4, 6, 6. And what do I do with these? Connect the dots. And I continue it on in both directions. And what do I put at the end? Arrows. You think by now you would have learned that, and yet still some of you prefer to taught the lesson over and over again. Every time I do this, I have to lose half marks on this. I don't know. You 
eventually, you know, my goal as a class perhaps is that, you know, in the end, nobody will lose marks for not putting arrows on stuff, right? Yeah, it's kind of asking a lot though. Okay, and if we want the absolute value of, <coughs> then we go negative six, six. Mm, yeah, sorry, zero, negative six. So zero, negative six. And we go one, negative, or sorry, zero, six, one, four, two, two, zero. And then these guys. What? And this is our function, having the characteristic V shape of an absolute value graph. So. Uh, how do the graphs compare? There, one of them contains negatives, the other one doesn't. So what would you say about this part of the graph? It's positive. It's the They're the same. So on the original function, when the y values are positive, then we don't make any changes. What would you say about this part of the graph? It's a reflection on the x-axis. So the negative part of the original graph is reflected in the x-axis, changing the y value to a negative y, but they were negative, so a negative of a negative gives you a positive value, which is what we want for an absolute value. Okay, so positive half remains the same. We don't have to do anything to it. The negative half, we basically negate to turn it positive. And this is the result, right? Reflection in the x-axis. Questions on number one? Complete the table of values shown for the functions x squared minus 6x plus 5 and the absolute value of x squared plus 6x plus 5. So actually, you know, I want to graph this first. So let, let's graph this in red. Just get an idea of what's going on here. We got negative 1, 12, 0, 5, uh, 1, 0, 2, negative 3, and 3, negative 4, 4, negative 3, 5, 0, and, or sorry, yeah, 6, 5, 7, 12. these with smooth curve and then do what? Arrows. Arrows. I think by now you'd remember that, but I would be hoping for too much. Okay, the absolute value. So what are we going to do with the 12, the 5, and the 0? What do we do with these negatives? And what do we do with these guys? Keep them. So where the values were positive here, here, or zero actually, right? We just leave them the same. Where the values were negative, we end up with a reflection, basically, in the x-axis. And we're going to get this and this. So in essence, the bottom part, the part that was below, the y-axis was reflected up to be above the y-axis. Okay. So how do the graphs compare? I think we've pretty much answered that, right? It's probably reflected in the x-axis, sorry. Y being replaced with negative y. Do you? At 11 or 411? So you have to leave now? Okay. We gotta go. Okay. So, <coughs> the graph of y equals the absolute value of f of x is the same as the graph of y equals f of x, except the portions of the graph that are below the x axis are reflected in the x axis. The points on or above the x axis are said to be invariant points because they remain unchanged after a transformation. Okay? So invariant points don't vary 
right? They are unchanged. So we got some graphs shown on the same grid. We are to sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value of f of x. So go ahead, I expect you can do that. You expect to. Yeah, probably. So just find some points. So if I got the point 12, negative 2, I know that will become 12, 2. And I got the point 15, negative 4. And we got this. The thing that dropped down. Okay, so actually maybe I want to do that in, in a different color than red, so I'm drawing the absolute value graph. Okay, and I'm sure you can do that for the other. Oh, let's not use blue either. Okay, and what do we got going on here? This is going to... It's like an inverted nail. That's not okay. a nail. I don't know. <coughs> do that. Okay, so we all got that, right? Yeah, that's what I say. Now, it's a little different, number four, right? So, number four, which isn't on here, shows you some graphs. And it asks you, what is possible equation for f of x? So if the absolute value is shown, then for 4a, give me a possible equation. A for well, the absolute value of x minus 4. Well, give me all possible equations, and how about that? Of the absolute value of no. No, no. I want the original. You're given the absolute value. I want possible equations for the original function. I don't see a three in there. It looks like a two to me. Yeah, two. It's a slope of half. One, two. Yeah, the slope looks like a half. So y equals one half x plus two. Which one? Four a. And what's another possible equation? Y is negative. 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 Sorry, what? Uh, no, wait. That wouldn't be plus two. That would be minus oh, two. Yeah. Negative. Got reflected, didn't it? Yes. Okay. So we say that either. The original graph was this, right? So that this part was the part that was reflected. Or we say that the original graph was this, because this was the part that was reflected, giving us two possible equations, right? Make sense? Yeah, OK, because I'm going to wipe this out and then draw in the other one. Wow, talk about lag. Lag. Okay.
Okay, so what the other one look like? Uh... Okay, so what are the two possible equations? What's one possible equation? I'm willing to accept standard form. What? I mean, he might be right. I just don't see that, obviously. Like, I think he is right. You factor it out. Well, it's got to have a plus 6 because it goes through the, the intercept of 6, isn't it? Or am I looking at the wrong thing? All right, so look, what do we do? Either this was down here. What's the vertex then? 2 negative what? 2. Okay. If you move one unit from the vertex, how far up or down are you going? It's like two units, right? Okay. Yeah? Does that give you a positive six? You get eight minus two is six, yeah? Okay. I can see no possible reason for doing this in any form other than this, right? Doesn't make any sense, right? Okay, or what else could have happened? So it could have been this. In which case our vertex is where? So it'll be negative 2. Right? So one of two possibilities is we don't know. We know that either the middle section was reflected up or that the end sections were reflected down. Okay, so we have to work with both possibilities. We know that things that are now positive could potentially have been negative. Right? And that obviously it's kind of a quadratic, so either this part that was positive was negative or that these parts which were positive were in fact negative and that part was positive. So. All right, so that fills in the blanks. Okay, next one. It's like different, right? What is this? <coughs> it's three halves x minus three, right? Negative. you see, you're just going to write, because that's what you're seeing on yours anyways. <coughs> Sketch the graph of y equals negative 3 halves x minus 3 by first sketching the graph of 3 halves, or negative 3 halves x minus 3, right? You just say the same thing. Okay. So how do we sketch negative 3 halves x minus 3? And then from here, what do I do? Or I go up and then left. And then I make the dots. Connect the dots and I draw arrows, right? And, you know, try and fill the screen and try and draw a reason. You know, you at least have tools you can use to draw a straight line. I can't do that. Well, I mean, I could pull out the line tool, I suppose, but I didn't. <coughs> I never remember to. Uh, right. And then what? Now we want to draw the absolute values, so what do we do? So reflect the negative portion up top. So let's do this in red, I suppose. So this part will stay the same. And then we reflect. So this goes to 3. This goes to 6. This goes to 9. And we have drawn the absolute value of negative 3 halves x minus 3. Use graphing technology to verify. 
That's crafting technology. <coughs> okay, what are we doing? Y equals the absolute value of negative three halves x. What is it? Minus three. <coughs> okay, there we go. <coughs> So, looks reasonable. Next. Uh, <coughs> state the intercepts. <coughs> what are the intercepts? Well, it says the intercepts. I think there are x and y intercepts. What are the x intercepts? What are the y intercepts? The absolute value refers to the y values, not the x values. x values can be negative, y values are positive. Okay, state the domain and range. Sure, you can do that. X is a minimum set of So x belongs to the real, and y is greater than or greater than zero. Greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so where were we? Uh, Okay, what else? Express the absolute value of, I better write this in properly, y equals negative 3 halves x minus 3 as a piecewise function. What's that mean? Okay, it goes to the definition of absolute value, right? So the definition of absolute value Looks like this. Okay. Uh, so to define the absolute value function as a piecewise function, we say that y is equal to x. It just is what it is as long as the x value is positive, right? Zero or positive. So if x is greater than or equal to 0. However, if it's negative, then we take the negative of it. So if you were programming this, any of you all program computers? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. if you were programming this, that's what you would write. You would write code to say, if x is greater than or equal to 0, it would return x. You'd write a little function that would do the absolute value for you. And if not, it's built in to every language. There's an absolute value built in, right? And what it does, basically, it takes the input and it examines it. It says if it's greater than or equal to 0, just returning what you gave me. Otherwise, I am going to take the negation of what you gave me, which is then going to make it positive, right? So this function. Right? I mean, it's like looking at the graph here, the original graph. Right? We say, hey, if we're over here, I'm just going to leave it. So the function oops, is negative 3 halves x minus 3 if, are we sure? Let's take another look at it. Okay, so if on our original graph, right, originally we graphed the function negative 3 halves x minus 3. It was positive from negative 2 to the left, right? So these, <coughs> these equations are the same, right? 
the absolute value of negative 3 halves x minus 3 is the same as negative 3 halves x minus 3 if x is less than negative 2, less than or equal to. However, If x is greater than negative 2, then we have to take the negative of the original function because the original function will be returning negative values at that point, right? In, in this case, for these values, the original function is always returning a positive, right? Since this value is going to be bigger than uh, 3, right? It's, it's going to be positive. Remember, so the x's are negative, so this will be positive. At the point where this is negative 2, this is equal to positive 3, which negates that. Anywhere to the left of that, as we get bigger values, this becomes a larger positive value than 3, therefore returning always positives. Okay? If the values of x are greater than like 0, then you're going to start returning negative values. Right? We can see it on the original graph, so we take the negative of that. Now, it's good enough to say this, right? the negative of this as opposed to actually having to go through and write it as 3 halves x plus 3. It's good enough just to say the negative of, you know, the original. Okay, so that's a piecewise function. Now to verify that, we could, of course, graph that. And I think I can set restrictions. So y is equal to negative 3, whoops, halves, Yeah, it's not division, is it? Negative 3 halves x minus 3, comma, x greater than negative 2. I don't think that's supposed to have like that. You need to put a space after that. Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Maybe try something simple. Maybe a space. No, okay, whatever. The, there, now, there is a way you can do it. I just, at the moment, don't know that, and I'm not going to spend the time looking it up. So, Okay, number five, or number six. And it's the same, yay. <coughs> For y equals the absolute value of 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, sketch the graph of y equals 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 by first completing the following steps. Determine, does it ask you to determine the intercepts? Yes. Yes. Okay, so determine the intercepts. So what's the y intercept? Three. Okay, what's the x intercept? Okay. What do you do after you factor? Check. Make sure. Right? Because what do you get wrong in factoring? Usually you don't get this wrong. You can't possibly have a 2x and something, you know, there's no way you guys can make a mistake there. And you're not going to make a mistake with the 1 and the 3, so it's going to be the signs or the placements of the 1 and the 3, right? So double check. 2x squared minus 6 plus 1 minus 5. Okay, good. Everything's good. Got our intercepts. Determine the coordinates of the vertex. How do we do that? Really, they had to give a. Why couldn't it do four? Why couldn't it have been even? Why couldn't it have been four? Uh, what? No. I couldn't even find it. What? <laughs> well, I just had to look around to see where was there an apps because it wasn't in the it wasn't in our drive. You know, so I was looking in the, the 20 IB drive to find the worksheet. I was like, okay, it's not there. Well, maybe, maybe it's a 20-1 worksheet. No, okay, how about pure 20? Yeah, okay, looks like. 30-1. Well, I don't know. It came out of somewhere. Okay, so is that right? Did I mess up? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, so use the intercepts and the vertex. I 
Why, why minus, why five quarters? Of, what's the vertex, right? It's going to be. Isn't it 16? I have no idea. Five over four squares. Wow. Ah, you're right. So then why did those guys say that it was right? Because they were trying to, trying to curry favor. Come on. Even I figured it out. I'm like, the worst part of this class. Because I had the worst part of this class. Yeah. All right, how's that? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> that's about all we can explain it by. I mean, I, hey, I have no excuse for making the original mistake, so okay, my leg hurts a little bit. What did you do to your leg? Whoa, what's wrong with your face? Nothing, it's just a scratch. Just a scratch. Yeah. Shut it off like Monday. He's only a strap. Why does there He's only a strap. <laughs> <laughs> He's only a strap. Okay, so what were the intercepts? What were the x-intercepts? So we what were the x-intercepts? Uh, minus, minus a half. Okay. What was the y-intercept? Uh, minus three. Minus three? Why did they give us so much space? What was the uh, five quarters? So one and a quarter and what? Right there. What's negative 49 eighths? That's like negative six and a bit, right? So one and a quarter and negative six and a bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, use the graph of that to draw. So now what do we do to get the graph that we want? Right, so we reflect this, and if I reflect upon that. Okay. Use graphing technology to verify your graph. Put them once. Yeah, you put them once, I think. And then it was so bad. I think I was playing with it. So let's start with the original. Was it 2x squared? So we had negative 5, we had 3, we had 3, and we had negative 1 and a quarter, and negative 6 and a quarter. Or 6 and an eighth, sorry. 1 and, one and a quarter and negative 6 and 1 eighth. And if we do the absolute value, then we get that. You just type in ABS. I typed in ABS, and yeah, then it threw brackets around it and figured out that I wanted the. I mean, I think the symbols might exist in decimals to graph it, but. There's the symbols on the keyboard, too. Yeah, I know. But hey, I know that absolute value is ABS. Is that for Dexbox? I never realized that meant absolute value. I do this a lot and everybody just says it's Yeah, I wish, eh? Not actual math. Okay, piecewise function. So when was the original function positive? Uh, before negative one and after three. Oh, right. Okay. So if x is less than or equal to negative a half, or x is greater than or equal to three, then the function is the original function. Okay, because it was positive there. Now it gets quiet. <clears throat> it's like now they figure, ooh. Uh, 
I haven't heard of piecewise stuff. Maybe now I should be paying attention. Does it matter where the equals are, like here or here? Okay. If I put them on both, would it be wrong? If I didn't put them on either, would it be wrong? Yes. Yeah. So you got to put them on at least one. You could put them on both. It wouldn't be wrong because they'd be zero at those points. But you have to have it on at least one. Okay. So if I wrote it that way, would that be right? Uh, Don't do this, by the way, but... Why not? Yeah, so right. Right. yeah. well, because I'm going to mark it wrong, and then you're going to have to come and argue for the mark. Say, but look, it's easy. <laughs> you're just messing yeah. around, because I was... So you're the one who told us that we... Yeah. <laughs> and, then I said, and then I said, Don't do that. But, but not, I did it here. Yeah, right. not that it's wrong, but it's just... It's, it's wrong, wrong is what it is. Yeah. It's wrong. Wrong. It's, it's, it's very poor communication. Yeah, it's like saying, let L be the width and W be the length. Yes. Like, like the little comic I put on the bottom of your test, right? So I just use, you know, these scribbles to, you know. I know. Technically, but they're different, right? I'm just going to use...